Hello and welcome to Maui. We're, we're here, for those of you who know the island, we're here um, in Paia in a little cottage that we've rented for a few days. And it's really wonderful to connect with you guys. And we'd like to respond to some of the questions that people have written in. Hey, there we are. Cool. I'm making sure we're actually on Facebook right now. <laughs> yeah, so we've got two computers here. So we're going to share this to the group. Just give us a second here. Okay. So whilst Jules is doing the computer stuff, um, we, we're on a, a little cottage on the near the coast. I mean, we, we can hear the ocean. I don't know whether you can hear it in the background. <laughs> but uh, we're really close and it's really wonderful to be here. This island of Maui is where the Stargate was created and where I started to channel Alksar for the first time and where Jules started to channel Alksar for the first time many years later. So it's a very special energetic here on Maui for us, for the Stargate. Yeah, we actually have a Stargate which is buried on the island just to connect the, the uh, Lemurian energies into the Stargate grid. We buried it in the Haleakala crater. But don't tell anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's a cool story because Pragi, I think you had the impulse to do that five years ago when it was around the time that Not I first started channeling Alcazar, maybe earlier than Actually, that. Actually, it happened when I had to cry on channel. Exactly. Yeah. And I also had a cry on channeling at that same time through this beautiful female channel. And uh, Pragit asked her about burying the Stargate. Mm -hmm. And she said, we know you're attached to this one, but we suggest you bury this titanium Stargate. It's the only 15 inch titanium. Yeah. Stargate Pradeep has, and Cryon also said it might not happen in when, the timing you're expecting. Right. So what happened was when we went into the crater that first time, I had terrible walking shoes on and I got <laughs> blisters on my feet and it's like a huge hike, so. We had to turn around. Yeah, so. And so it didn't happen for several years later. And, but we asked Alcazar about it at that time and he said, when it's the right time for you to bury this stargate in the crater, it will be as if the earth opens up oh, right. to receive it. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, cool. So fast forward four, five, four and a half years later, it was last year, so four years later, mm. we finally get down. I have good walking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> we get down through the, there's this place called the Rainbow Bridge yeah. on the crater. And we were just guided to this place place and as you know it's very rocky the whole place is very rocky there and yet when we found this place it literally just opened up it was it was like soft 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 stand we were wondering we had we went out and bought like a shovel that folds together and unfolds and we we're like thinking like you know it could be like we need a pickaxe yeah you know and then we we get to the spot that feels right and it's literally sand yeah. but it's also just rain so it's compact enough that it creates a perfect cylinder mm. for us anyway it was amazing it was amazing but getting back to <laughs> getting back to the webinar um, there are lots of questions we're not going to be able to answer them all here we've selected some of them and we've actually shortened some of them because some people wrote almost a, a book with their questions. <laughs> but we picked the essence of the question. And also, there were many people that wrote very personal questions. And they're the kind of things that need to have a more detailed, more intimate response and to. And it also needs to be a back and forth conversation between yeah. you and Alcazar so that we can get to the root of what is actually causing your concern yeah. and your question. Yeah. So if you feel like you want further information, then you need to get a, a session with Alcazar through Julianne and myself, and we'll be available again um, mid-January. Yeah, so if you are interested in that, you can just email us at support at thestargateexperience.com. Okay, so let's pull up the questions, Joyce. Okay. 
So before we go into that, though, I wanted to just show y'all, y'all, because yeah. <laughs> uh, you can actually see the ocean from here. If you zoom into, do you see it? It's, <laughs> it's blue back there. Uh, I might have to stand up so you can really see it, <laughs> but uh, that might be a rooftop. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> let's let's get this right here. Yeah, you can see it just back the very yeah, the end. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like for you, we're um, we're staying in this little town called Paio, which is this little beach town. Okay, so we'll uh, start with some of these questions. We wanted to do this Facebook Live from the beach. We have a mobile hotspot. Yeah, but then we realized the sound of the waves is so strong. We can hear them here. And also our can. favorite beach is actually a nude beach. <laughs> he doesn't like that I said that. But I was like, we can't do that. You know, someone could just walk right on by. Anyway, let's get to the questions. <laughs> okay. So the first one we got here, and they're in no particular order. Uh, can you explain in detail what the message we sent, are sending out into the universe when we did that series of meditations? And what was the purpose in creating a toroidal field? Well, the toroidal field created this spiraling energy, which allowed that message to go out into the universe. It was created, if you remember, by the masters of Lemuria and other guides contributing their energy to support that spiral of energy getting stronger and stronger. And just to remind you that it's in the quantum field where there's no time, and so as we continue to repeat those meditations, we're amplifying it more and more and more. And so we are encouraged to do it two, three times if you have that feeling to do that and to amplify <laughs> the experience even more. What was the message? Well, it was mentioned briefly at the time, but the message is saying that Humanity is ready for the next step. And as we mentioned before, um, Experience even more. Dr. Todd and the Lemurian Choir sent a message out in, I believe it's 2012, wasn't it? Yeah. 1221. That was the first message that went out from a very large group of people and that created an awareness of humanity being ready. And now this is saying we're ready for the next step. The next step as Alcazar mentioned, is that it brings the guides, in a sense, a little bit closer. It's saying that we're ready for the next level of connection with our guides, and that's the guides on all levels. And so we had an experience of uh, the dragon realm, Ra'an, and the mer people, the mermaids, and uh, mermen. So we had that first connection with them. And as you know, we've already worked with the unicorns um, and the nature spirits, but it's about bringing all those realms back into our awareness. One of the things that <laughs> the dragon said um, was that they are now able to bring more of their presence here. Mm, yeah. And I, I believe that's what Alcazar said also about all the higher dimensional beings is this message we sent out was almost like a, a trigger so that like more higher dimensional support can flow into the earth. It's triggering the next phase of the awakening of humanity. And at the same time, it was triggering uh, an evolution in the energy of the earth herself. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's asked a question about that, about the dimensions and it's not on that. Okay. But, um, Many people for years have talked about the earth moving into the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, well, some people get left behind. It's not like that. And I think we've mentioned it before. But it's humanity raising our vibration. As enough of us move our vibration to a more permanent, higher level of vibration, 
that triggers the movement of Gaia, of the earth, into those higher realities. And so it's very much about humans guiding that process. And that's what one of the things that we're doing as we do the Sage work and, and the many, many other people around the world assisting others to raise their vibration. Okay. So somebody, Lisa is saying, I'd love to do this meditation seminar again as a group. Would it be possible to organize another time frame where we can all do this meditation together? Well, Lisa, we are doing it all together. <laughs> and the time frame is actually in the quantum field where there is no time. So every time that we do this, you are connecting into that original experience and amplifying it. So if you're doing it by yourself, just imagine yourself there in that group. Take a look at the video again. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> also I think there have been, I think Lisa, you might have even done this, but somebody was posting on the Facebook group that they were doing it at a certain time and inviting people to join them. Yeah, you can do it that way as well. Yeah. Another question, where do the dragons live? <laughs> well, the dragons live in another dimension which is coming closer. And few people have actually connected in a much deeper way to the dragon realm. And that's available for all of us now, as we were saying, they're coming closer. So rather than giving you a, an answer, which is just information for the mind, we invite you to invite the dragons into your meditations mm -hmm. this, and have them ex help you experience where they exactly. come from. This work really is all about coaxing ourselves into having a deeper experiential connection. Yeah. It's not about information for the mind because information for the mind is really unverifiable. But when you have an actual experience, the experience changes you. Mm. It actually starts to, like Alcazar says, as you vibrate with the energy, it starts to awaken your multidimensional DNA. It awakens that part of you that knows. Um, and sometimes that knowingness can be very hard to put into words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's that catalyst for the actual transformation. That's what's the focus of the Stargate yeah. work. Yeah, I noticed that um, on our picture here it's going light and dark. The sun is going in and out, <laughs> in uh, and out behind the clouds. So yeah. it's affecting the lighting it's in the room. It's going to be a really nice beach day by the time we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Actually, Adrian sent a very long, couple of very long questions in about dimensions. And so um, rather than read the whole question, we'll just give you the beginnings of it and then expand the answer. And the question is, what is the intent of this experience? Is the planet moving to a higher vibrational frequency called the fifth dimension, as many say? So we started to touch on that. And as Alcazar says many, many times, it's not possible to explain in our language reality because reality is so much more than the third dimension and that our brain-mind mechanism is designed to function in this third dimensional reality. And until our brain-mind shifts, we're not going to be able to understand the reality. So. They can, the truth can only be hinted at, can only be explained in words that don't actually tell the truth. It's the fingers pointing at the moon thing. This enlightened okay. person who's like, I'm, I'm a finger pointing at the moon. Don't look at my finger, look at the moon. This is the same thing that we're saying with Alcazar's explanations. He's hinting at something. Don't focus too much on the words. Mm -hmm. This is about the experience. So focus on having an experience rather than trying to logically understand what we try and explain, which is totally illogical. So You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so what are dimensions? Well, there's different, different explanations of dimensions. Alcazar, when we work with the Stargate and we go up to the 12th dimension. Alpazar says, forget about the numbers. The numbers are just given, in a sense, for the mind to feel like something's changing. Mm -hmm. You have the experience 
you can feel the difference in the frequency when you do the meditations. And so just allow for the possibility that reality is, in a sense, multidimensional. Not only on a linear way this way, but multidimensional this way, multidimensional this way. It's so vast that it just can't be described in words. <sighs> so, can we have more questions? Well, there's an interesting one that just came in on the Facebook feed, which is, what about free will? If only a relatively small group of us is ready and wishing this greater support and sending this message, is that not impacting the rest of humanity who may not wish this influence? Well, the thing is that we're all connected. We don't realize it. We feel part of the illusion of being here on this reality is that we're separate. I'm here, Jules is there, no matter how close we get, we're still separate. But the reality, the greater reality, is that we are all one. And this is something that the New Age has said forever and guidance from all kinds of different um, aspects of guides have all said this, we are all one. But we are not all one in the third dimension, and this is the problem again. The mind cannot understand that. So there's a field which Alcazar and many others called the human morphic field. It's a field where we are all connected. And as one individual raises their vibration, the vibration of the whole field is affected minutely, but it's affected. But the thing is, when there's hundreds of thousands of people raising their vibration, the vibration of the morphic field incrementally increases. And that's how we're actually going to shift into the fifth dimension. So, and again, don't get caught up with the number. It's just raising the vibration of everyone and Gaia as well, Earth as well. So it's also about what's also termed the light and the dark. And the darkness is not the nasty being with the pitchfork. It's just unconsciousness. And we see a lot of that coming to the surface around the world right now. It's simply unconsciousness. It's the lower vibration. And so what's happened is we have this separation of the light and the so-called dark. As we bring more of the consciousness, which is a higher vibration, which is also light, light is consciousness. As we bring more and more of it, it changes the whole morphic field. And so it starts to bring the so-called dark side towards the light. We're shining more light into the darkness. And so slowly, slowly, whether they want it or not, their vibration is being raised. And as their vibration begins to rise, their awareness changes. And slowly, slowly, what they want also changes. Because each one of us listening now has been in that dark place. And we have been those murderers. We have been those rapists. We have been those manipulative people. And we've changed our attitude. And this is helping others change their attitude as well. And it's, it's so interesting to me because Alcazar says this is how humanity as a whole will really change. Um, if we look at the world of politics and the greed that keeps the established systems in place that we know aren't serving anyone, he says that essentially like the people who feel really called to go out and be activists and change that, that's beautiful. But unless you feel that uh, deeply and strongly from within, it's like support those people and raise your vibration because as this ocean of energy that we are all in, this ocean of consciousness raises slowly, 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 we get to the point where even those people who are right now supporting the status quo and keeping these systems in place, their consciousness is affected by this. The consciousness of the nearest and dearest people to them is affected by this. And so this kind of sea change is the way that all those systems will start to crumble. I mean, I'm sure you're aware of 
lots of people in your own life that say, oh yeah, well, I would love to live in a new way, but it's not possible. Look at the world, it's not possible. But the thing is that as soon as pe those people see the possibilities, then they will change very rapidly. And that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. Next question. <clears throat> so we're coming back to the meditations. But Bianca also asked, She's saying, day two and day three meditations left me in tears and a very strong feeling of homesickness, a familiarity with sadness of wanting to go home. So this is something that many, many people have commented upon over the years. It's beautiful when we start to feel the possibility that there's a home planet. And as that possibility becomes a reality, when you feel their energy coming to you in the meditations, then very often the first response is an emotional feeling of, I want to go home. And many people over the years have said, I feel like I've just been dumped here. I've been left here in earth and I don't belong here. These are all different feelings that people have expressed. Yes, we can feel a sadness about wanting to go home, but we came here with a purpose. We came here to assist in this evolution of the universe. Now, because I've talked about this in the past. So very, very briefly. Are you going to give a brief history of the evolution <laughs> of the universe, Brigitte? <laughs> that sounds good. Let's do that. <laughs> You're bad. <laughs> Some of you have heard this. Um, in the past, but Alcazar is saying basically there are many, many advanced races around the universe, and we know some of them from the guys that come and help. And imagine they've been living in this energy of oneness, developing and expanding their experiences for literally millions of our Earth years, and that they've reached enlightenment and beyond. And so they've created in all their different environments. Um, all kinds of very different experiences. Wisdom, skills and abilities. Think, think about different atmospheric planets, different non-physical mm -hmm. realities, all these, all these different environments reaching the pinnacle of their potential in their particular environment. Yeah. And so it was decided that to bring all these amazing beings together in one place and mix and merge their DNA and their abilities. And their wisdom. And their wisdom. And see what will be created. And the earth was designed for that. And so people came from all over the universe with very different body types, for example. And all agreed to put on this, what Alcazar calls a body suit. The human body the suit. The human body suit. So that we all look similar. And then we had many, many lifetimes of experiencing, of unconsciousness, to mix and merge and to forget, in a sense, to become um, unattached to where we've come from and to become involved in this human experience experiment. And now we're coming to that place of waking up to where we've come from and then that will take us into understanding of the incredible skills and abilities that we have in our higher dimensional DNA. And the whole purpose of this, according to Alcazar, is to create something completely new. You can think of it almost like unleashing this creativity of all these different wisdoms, experiences from all over the universe, coming together, mixing, merging, co-creating, and the explosion of creativity that is possible on this earth is I can feel it and sense it and you see it sometimes in these sometimes I see videos of like artists coming together and creating like different murals in this abandoned school in France for example and you're just like yes <laughs> but it's far beyond that and of course. Al Alcazar said we don't know what's gonna happen yeah but the whole universe is watching yeah so, so to get back, get back to Bianca's question, yes, we can feel homesick, but move beyond it. Invite the support of your home here. 
And as you begin to evolve, as you raise your vibration, you'll find that you have the ability to go home, which is basically the, the last planet you feel really a, a, attached to. You have that ability to go home out of body. Astral so, travel is another way of saying yeah. So develop your, your ability to raise your vibration and all kinds of things can open up. Very true. And this is how Alcazar actually defines ascension is a lot of people think it's like, of course, it's when you turn into a ball of light and you go poof <laughs> into the bliss. Um, but actually Alcazar says it's when you bring your total consciousness, everything that you are, all your skills and abilities, insights, wisdoms, experiences from these higher dimensional aspects of yourself from the totality of who you actually are. So when you bring all of that here to the earth, that is ascension. That's the awakening. That's the explosion of creativity. Ascending your vibration to allow all those things to happen. And I really like the way that, I don't know if it's Alcazar or Cryon, but they define peace on earth as when everybody, when we reach the point on this earth where everybody has enough food, water, shelter, their basic needs are met. That's mm. when we establish peace on earth. Cool. I like that. So next question. I'm not sure who this is from. Can I take the Stargate with guides, angels, star families with me when I go out into the world or only when I meditate? Those beings are always there. You can always access them, but we tend to turn off our connection when we finish the meditation. That's an old habit that we all have. When we do the intensives in Mount Shasta, Alcazar's continuously saying to people, see if you can maintain an awareness of the energy during the breaks, when you go home at night. So yes, you can take them with you. They're always available. Uh, it's just an old habit of disconnecting at the end of the meditations. So there are a few different kind of techniques that you can use to uh, bring the guides into your day-to-day -day life. The most powerful one actually is just to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also some people are like, oh, I don't need, like I don't want to feel like I'm depending on someone else for help. But what you have to realize is that the guides actually can only assist you through your super consciousness and through your so, asking and through your asking so what you are really doing is saying okay i know that i'm in this particular third dimensional reality i know that there's this part of myself that's actually outside of it and able to bring synchronicity into my life as i move through here so what you're saying is i'm calling upon that part of myself that can set things up for me so that I can click into a synchronicity. And the more that we actually click into that synchronicity, the more we are empowered to know ourselves as that super consciousness. Yeah. So do we have this next question? Yeah. I'm trying to be on the Facebook chat at the same time as we have these questions. Okay. Should we sometimes repeat the old seminar meditations like growing young and so on? Or is it better to repeat only the last ones? The Growing Young seminar was absolutely amazing. And it's something that needs to be repeated. And yes, you can take a break now and again if you feel to. If, if for example, this particular webinar, that is something which we invite you to repeat again. So yes, do this webinar, repeat it a couple of times. But if you're doing the you thing, and go back to that as well. Go back to that regularly because it's affecting the physical body and the physical body takes a long time to change. You're actually changing or recreating new cells. So when the body replaces the cells, you're creating them at a higher vibration, a more healthy cellular structure. Yeah, and it's also... Um it's about following your feelings. Like if you are like bored to tears with a particular meditation set, then it's time for you yeah, to, to reach anymore. out and, and find something that's, that's intriguing for you. And so 
check out the stargateexperience.com. You'll find a lot of free meditations there. And also in the new year, we are going to be uh, releasing a lot more, but we're also going to be looking for a small group of people who want to help us out by looking through some of our archives mm. of past workshops that we've done live all over the world. So tune in and feel whether that's something you'd like to do, because we're going to be creating some um, exciting things in 2018. You can help us actually create. Another, uh, another one is the inner child. The inner child work is something which also needs to be repeated again and again to dissolve all the different patterns that we have that we, uh, we collected as we move through our early years. So there's some other things here which are really important if, if you wish to shed the burden of the old and move into new awareness. But then, it's, it's important huh. to understand you don't have to go searching for these uh, patterns. Like they, they come to you, yeah. right? It's like, it's those things that we're like, oh God, I feel this way again. That's the time to say, okay. That's when you want to look deeper because let's it's, do the inner child. it's coming up to yeah. be released. It's like yeah. Alcazar says, as soon as you become aware of a limitation, you already have the ability to dissolve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so this... The inner child is something which we'd recommend for absolutely everyone. We've been doing it in many different countries, and it's, it's translated into many different languages. We have it in Italian and Portuguese. It's coming soon in those We're, two. It's not quite finished yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the, that's right, because you, you were just doing that yeah. this past autumn. Yeah. Okay. So... There's a question from Germany. What kind of being is the beloved Symphonia? I understood Mer, but I, I, if I translate it in German, it means nothing. Um, it's about the mermaids, which in German is Mir Jungfrau. You know that? That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Google Translate. <laughs> uh, so it's the, the mermaids, the mermen, etc. Okay. For those of us who are new, who is Alcazar? Is he a single or collective consciousness? Where is he from? Okay, so that's a, that's an answer that I usually ask you to talk about. Okay, so the story begins that apparently for years and years and years, Alcazar would not answer that question. He would, Well, he would say, what difference does it make? It's just information for your mind, and it's just your mind wanting to grasp onto something. Feel the energy. And if it feels right to you, if it clicks with you, pursue it. And if it doesn't, then drop it. So <laughs> I love Alcazar's answers like that <laughs> uh, because it's so true. It's like, yeah, like we can explain to you who Alcazar is, but you really have to feel it. And what this other person, what the other thing this person says. Is, and what is our connection if we felt such a strong resonance that it brought us to tears? So the first thing to understand about Alcazar, before going into this whole story, is that the whole function of Alcazar and the Stargate work is to assist in the transition process, what's called the awakening of humanity. That's their whole focus. But it goes beyond just this earth. The Stargate as a tool for raising your vibration, for bringing your consciousness here, has been around on other planetary systems. And there's something called the Planetary Transition Team, which many people who are drawn to the Stargate work are actually a part of. And this is those of us beings who decide that we're going to go into the depths of unconsciousness along with a planetary civilization so that we can be among the first to reawaken. And it's almost like we specialize in this. So it, many of you, if you feel affected by this work deeply, you are probably very much a part of this process of the planetary transition team. And so the story, when, um, when I first started to have Alcazar bring his energy through, it was in the very last days of December, 2012. 
like pretty cool timing. <laughs> and um, I was here on Maui visiting to help with Pregi. I was actually volunteering um, at the time. He was on Maui and he was like, I'm so stressed out. I have all this stuff to do. <laughs> and his best friend Reed said, why don't you bring Jules over? Because he knew I had been volunteering. And I was fresh out of university then, still planning on becoming a medical doctor. Um, and so Alcazar started to bring his energy spontaneously through me. And within days of that, I had this opportunity to have a personal session with a female cryon channel who's recognized by Lee Carroll, and she's amazing. Unfortunately, she doesn't do it anymore. We're hoping she'll start again. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask this question about why Alcazar is bringing this energy through me. But the words that came out of my mouth were, who is Alcazar? I didn't know that he had never answered that question before. And Cryon gave me uh, a real answer. It's still kind of cryptic. What Cryon said was, Alcazar is far more than you expect. The being known as Alcazar is actually a spokesperson for a group of universal masters who bring their energy and merge with Alcazar so that he can then speak. And so the cat was kind of out of the bag after Cryon said this, and Alcazar clarified by saying that it's a bit like um, a team on the earth is. So when you have a team with many different spe specialties, different skill sets, you can get a lot more done. So that's similar to the Alcazar group. Actually, that's why Alcazar always says, beloved ones, we greet thee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's always speaking in the plural. Yeah, good answer. Uh, but we still have no idea what a universal master is. <laughs> uh, Sabine asking a question. Alcazar talks about a home in the stars and connecting to our home planet. In my understanding, we do not only come from one planet, but, ha but have had experiences living on many planets or stars. Well, that's probably true. Um, it is true. <laughs> it's totally true. In this me. vastness, I'm sure there's some people who have only been on one before. But anyway. well, yeah, I mean, for most of us, it's true. <laughs> we are, this is really difficult for the mind to grasp. But this is, as you know, let's start this way. As you know, you've lived many lifetimes. Most people begin to feel that and to accept that. But we've lived many lifetimes, many experiences out there in the universe before we came here because we are very, very skilled beings who came to bring our skills and abilities here. We've forgotten them. We're about to remember them. But we've... We've come from somewhere in the universe. We've always been. This is what's difficult. We didn't suddenly get born. We've always been. We're part of this whole consciousness that's sometimes called the God, God force or spirit or many of the other labels that are put on it, which is indescribable. And so we've, we have had many experiences in our past, very lightly, different planetary systems and whatever and and so yes there's a great possibility that you've had many so-called home experiences in other places before this but for most people when you tune in and ask for it there's a particular one that comes to you it's a particular one that touches your heart i believe um my intuitive sense about this has always been that Usually, the place that we call home in this universe, maybe not even in this universe, but I think the place that we call home is, is typically the first place we come into when our beingness first decides to come into this particular universe. If you think about there are multi-verses, there are multiple universes mm -hmm. in existence, We've been in other universes also because we are eternal and we know from science that this universe is about 14 billion years old. So we're older than the universe. But there was a moment in time 
when our spirit decided to interact with this particular universe. And I believe that when we actually do that, we do it with people, other beings who are near and dear to us. It's mm -hmm. a collective choice. And in that collective choice, I believe that there is sort of a home incubation period or something of that sort, where it's like a place of particularly special beings to us, where it's a place of particular high consciousness. And that's what it feels like, at least for me, that's what it feels like when I call on my home family. It feels like just the place and the beings in the universe who are like the dearest to me, if that makes sense. And then from there, we, we kind of like go and have all of our experiences in all these different realities. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's... Yeah. And the concept of other universes, when we can't even grasp this particular one, is stay tuned. Is, is challenging. Yeah. But Alcazar has said that in this New Year's intensive that's going to be happening so, soon, there's a great possibility of us connecting to another universe or maybe universes. So it's a continuation from this Thanksgiving build up this message that we sent out so i've got no idea right now <laughs> what's going to happen how that's going to be maybe we will do another webinar after it i don't know it just depends but we're really looking forward to that <laughs> okay next question nivia maria is saying i'm doing the webinar for the second time sometimes i have very strong and sometimes more subtle tingling but because I always, I always feel that something is holding me back. Well, that something is you. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Just allow for the possibility that when you're doing these meditations, what's happening for you in the moment is exactly right. The problem is we have expectations. This applies to almost everyone. If you have an expectation of experiencing something, oh, wow, so powerful, that expectation gets in the way of what actually wants to happen. Alcazar says again and again that there's nothing to do just to relax into the energies. And because there's nothing to do, you cannot do it wrong. So whatever's happening, whatever your experience is, it's right for you. If you judge it, you start to shut things down. You actually start to stop those things that perhaps you've been wanting to have happen. Your judgment prevents them from coming into your experience. So it's difficult, I know, especially when you hear about other people having all these wonderful experiences and you say, oh, I want that too. But that's not necessarily what you need in the moment. So just trust, carry on with your meditations. Don't feel like you're doing it wrong. Your expectations and your judgments can slow things down. So just be totally okay with what's happening. Enjoy the subtle tingling. Say thank you, bring me more. Yeah, it's like Alcazar said to me just the other day, love yourself as you are. Mm. And that's something that he continuously stresses to everyone. Be with your experience as it is. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what's next, Jules? Some water. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, someone who's saying I don't feel like I'm experiencing anything. So yeah, so in a way, this is a continuation. And she's saying, is there another meditation or a recommendation? Liliana, again, this, the answer that we've just given really applies to you as well. Just trust that what's happening right now is all that's needed. And this sense that I don't feel anything, it, there's a judgment in that. There's a judgment that I can't feel anything. Drop that. Just say, I'm ready to feel. 
and just be okay with what is. And slowly, slowly, when it's the right time, different sensations will start to happen for you. And that happened to my mom, actually, when she first came to the Stargate. She loved it. She was like, oh, I love everything that's being talked about, but I don't feel anything. But I looked at her, and there were these sparkles in her eyes. So I told her, I was like, there are sparkles in your eyes, so you should keep going. And um, she did, and she started to actually have like um, visions starting to happen to her. Um, like one of like a maypole with like children running around it. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but the thing is, again and again, we just have to stress what's happening for you is right for you in the moment. Don't judge it. Your judgment slows things down. And there was another person, I'm just remembering this. She, um, I think it was in Budapest, and she raised her hand and she said, I'm so happy to be here. It was like the second time I think that you were there. And she says, I don't feel anything during the meditations. And after the day is done, I just have a headache, a little bit of a headache. But what happens in my life is amazing. And she said like all these different like positive things have happened. Like, you know, like promotions in her job and like new love happening and like all these different like yeah. synchronistic magical things happening in her life. So it's like these energies just affect people in different ways ways yeah cool I thought that was really fun though yeah <laughs> question from Carl can Alcazar give an idea what the oneness is haha <laughs> <laughs> ideas are for the mind Carl <laughs> <laughs> without the mind where would we be now <laughs> <laughs> so oneness hmm oneness is another name for spirit for God all that is and can it be described? Not really. Well, yeah, it can. All right. Let's do it. So another thing Carl said was, like, I've always imagined it as this big soup. And that's... That sounds like cryon. It does sound like cryon. And it's true, but it's also a little bit um, misleading because there's individuation within the oneness, which is one of the most difficult things for people to grasp. But for example, we've had people in Stargate workshops suddenly report that they could feel every single other person in the room, that they could feel the walls, they could feel everything. That is a connection to the oneness that they are experiencing. It's a, it's a form of oneness that can be experienced in this 3D reality. But if you think about that experience, they're able to feel each person, but they're also able to tune into the individuation of each person. So if we imagine spirit as the oneness and our spirits, think about our multidimensional DNA. Okay, so as a spirit, we still have <clears throat> the ability to have all these different experiences within the the vast universe and all those experiences are actually recorded for us so that we have this history so that we have this individuation within the oneness um so you can think about it like our multi-dimensional dna is like our particular cd rom it's like our <laughs> it's our record of all of these different experiences and all these different dimensions because we do have an individuation and at the same time when we're in that place of oneness we can like for example merge completely with another being and have total access to their complete history and then like at the same time our consciousness is so vast that we actually are God and so we are simultaneously able to experience every single individuated being um, that's my two cents on that matter. Oh, that's a good dollar's worth. <laughs> yeah, so um, one of the things that we did that we haven't shared yet was take a look at the Mandelbrot series, um, which is like a, a fractal visualization. Um, and Pragit was actually kind of rapping in a really cool way about this image for actually like the evolution of the universe and like being individuated within the oneness and creating these co-creative experiences um, 
within uh, universal time, as, it, as, as he was looking into this fractal that kept evolving, and you'd zoom into one part of it, and it would be able to go along this particular experience, and then suddenly everything would change. So we'll share that particular, it was a YouTube video, so we'll see if we can share that YouTube video and put Pragit's voiceover on it so that you guys can kind of experience a bit of what he was, uh, it was an al image that Alcazar gave him. Yeah. Okay, well, there's many more questions, but I feel like um, we've we've answered enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody's asking about Ran and having more information from the Dragon Realm. This will happen when it's time. The um, thing about channeling Ran is that his voice is so coarse, I suppose, that it gives me a sore throat. <laughs> So after a couple of minutes channeling Ron, my throat hurts. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that <laughs> to allow him to come through more I think for a longer just, time. I think you could just, you know, just ask Ron to, like, speak a little more uh, uh, yeah? okay. softly. Yeah. Okay, people. I bet Ron would be very receptive to that. Yeah. I like. I, I, I always, whenever <laughs> I know that the Dragon Realm is going to come through in a workshop, I'll be like, so ask inside for the presence of the dragons. You know, my voice is all soothing and stuff. And then I have to, like, open my eyes because I know Fregit's about to be like. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And, and a lot of people jump and then they, you know, a lot of people start to just feel so many emotions because there's a part of us that remembers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's like the dragon realm, the unicorns, the fairies. All these have been part of our reality in the distant past, before religions came and started to manipulate people. And so it's really just deep in our remembering. Mm -hmm. And so slowly, slowly, all those beings are going to come back into our experiencing, first of all in our meditations, but then as we continue to raise our vibration, we can t start to see into those dimensions. Yeah. People could see into those dimensions in the past. You could see the dragons. Mm -hmm. And also, um, a lot of people have aspects of their higher selves in these other dimensions. So it could be that you've had your human aspect has connected with the dragons in, in the past. And it could also be that there's a part of your spirit that's connected to the dragons, you know, or the unicorns, as is in my case. Um, my higher self is incarnated in the unicorn realm as three different unicorns. It's how it works there. So there's so there's so much to who we are, and it's for us to discover. It's like it's the greatest thing because it's like in in this day and age we think we have to create ourselves, but actually there's so much to ourselves that we just have to rediscover. Exactly. Yeah, it's about re-remembering, as Alex puts it. Mm -hmm. And then we can un unleash tons of creativity mm. also. So we have a little bit of creativity about that we'd like to share with you before we depart. Really? And I bought myself a new toy. Oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, not very good at it yet, but uh, we, had, we bought a drone camera and we have made just a very short little piece just to show you. Priggy is so <laughs> excited about his toy, this drone. And it's beautiful and it shoots in 4K. So, I mean, what we're going to show you is really, it's not even as beautiful as it actually looks. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, I was wondering if we could bring Alcazar through. <laughs> Because specifically, I would love an update about what we've accomplished from Alcazar's perspective. Mm -hmm. Now that in this time frame of our reality, it's been a few weeks. Okay. <clears throat> Beloved ones, we greet the is Alcazar. And as always, it is a great honor to be with you at this moment of your time. 
we often greet you in this way, saying, in this moment of your time. Why? Because you are all listening to this in different time frames. Even though this one is talking here on your island of Maui, those of you listening around the world, you are already a few moments late because of the time delay in your electronics. So this is not actually live in a sense, even though you are watching it. Others will be watching it days, weeks, and months later. And yet you all have the potential of tuning in to the energy that we are sending you right now. So relax, close the eyes if you wish, and just feel. We are sending you a gentle energetic right now. So, to answer the question of this one, Julianne, The message that is sent out from the earth through these meditations, through the repeating of the webinar, is amplifying again and again the, the message, the broadcast which is saying, come closer. The stronger the message, the closer your guides can come. This is why we are saying repeat it. You will notice that from these meditations, change can happen for you. Many, many of you have acknowledged this, risen to these two, sharing the changes that have happened. Change happens for you when you do these meditations but it also amplifies the message going out into the universe. The stronger the asking through this message, the greater the response from the numerous aspects of guides who are here to assist humanity. So, what has happened from this moment of the meditation initially and this moment here now, as we talk to you from this island of Maui. The message has been amplified about fourfold. It is much stronger now than when it was initially sent out. And we expect this to double again within the next two, three weeks. And we expect it to double yet again in the two, three weeks after that. Why? Because we are inviting you to continue to repeat. We are inviting you to allow those who have not yet heard about this experience, we are inviting you to share it with them. Thousands of individuals sending this message out again and again will create an amazing opportunity of transformation here on your earth. Understand this deeply. It offers all of those who are ready to change a support system to enable that to occur more easily, more gracefully, more simply. And so, beloveds, share this with those who may benefit. You are changing your world and far beyond. You are bringing a new level of harmony to the universe. We love you and we bless you. We honor you greatly. And as always, we will talk to you again very soon today. Hmm. Interesting. A new level of harmony yeah. in the universe. Yeah, you caught that, huh? Yeah. <laughs>
That's interesting. He's never said that before. He said something at the, uh, it was the Mer people actually, at the very last part of the intensive. The Mer people said, you're bringing the dimensions closer together. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. It's Sinfonia said that. That's yeah. a lovely name, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so, so let us show you this little, little clip. We're excited. We um, uploaded this this morning, and it's uh, some of the first um, drone footage that we've got from Maui. So here we go. Here we go. So here we are. We're actually at the top of Haleakala Crater. And this is the first time I've actually played with this incredible camera. And you can see me there on the right with my brother, who came over from England for a short vacation. And so here we are trying to land. <laughs> and right behind you can see all the clouds. We're high up above the clouds. And for those of you that know Maui, that's the actual central valley. And it's totally covered in clouds right now. And so here we are, landing the drone for the very first time. And then we take you over to the North Shore. You can see West Maui Mountains there in the distance. We're just outside Paia, for those of you that know, and we're staying there. And the ocean there is always really beautiful with this white, foamy finish right when it comes to the coast. Very rocky coast, as you can see all the volcanic rocks and just wanted to share just a little bit with you um, as we get a little f more familiar with this camera we'll be sharing some more views of the islands in fact as many of you know we're going over to Big Island which is the actual island of Hawaii to be with Kryon and so we'll send you some shots from there Thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to go out. It's a lovely sunny day now, and yes. we're going to go out and maybe make some more movies. <laughs> really? <laughs> I want to go lie on the beach in the sun. Mm. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, We've also been looking at various hotels and things to see if we can create a big workshop over here next year. But so we'll far... See. We haven't settled on anything in particular. Okay, much love to you all. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye.